Welcome, Artem. It's great to talk. Hey, to you. what's happening? I was so I was so happy actually. I was uh, glad that we had the opportunity to cover something new and continue our conversation. I had such a good time talking to you last time. Oh yeah, I had a blast. So Devin shocks the world, huh? Yeah. But let's, start, but let's start. So so just for the audience to know, there was a what did they title the match? Uh, the matchup? I forgot what it was called. The King what of the mean? Table. Yes, yes. King, King of the, of the table. table. So just for the audience to know that don't follow arm wrestling, there was just a match in Dubai, my home city, called King of the Table, um, one of the most interesting matches. So there was a Coach Ray who has a YouTube channel called World of Arm Wrestling. Voice of Arm Wrestling. Voice, Voice of, of Arm Wrestling. Coach Ray, who's been training at Larry Wheels. He had a match against Mazahir Sadu, is the name? Yes, yes. Mazahir Sadu. And then there was a match with Larry and Schoolboy. And then a uh-huh. match with Devin and, and Michael, which I really want to talk about. But let's start with the first one. What did you think about that first three rounds that happened with Coach Ray, where Ma- Mazahar just blew through? And by the way, Mazahar, if I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize. Yeah. yeah uh, so pretty much, it's first, it seems like the Mazahar were so much stronger than Coach Ray. That's what it seemed like, right? But at the same time, from what I've learned and from what it looked like, Coach Ray is like, uh, I would say he's, you can say he's almost one dimensional puller. That's what it seems like in his thing. I don't, like, seems like when I, I don't know, I don't, for some reason, he gonna try as many things that he should have. Like, his setups were like questionable to us when we were seeking all three of us commentating the whole thing. He could have been a lot more active and stuff. And it's almost like he got lucky that Mazahir's like endurance didn't hold up. I think they were I think they were so much closer to each other to where, you know, like Coach Trey was just kind of like closing that a little bit. And once Mazahir kind of started going down, that where the match evened out and went to that thing. Was it that or was the I mean I thought it might be the endurance, but the strap is what just for the audience to know. So basically Coach Ray and Mazar uh, fought, fought each other for I think three three rounds in which Mazar just went through Ray without a strap though. And then when they got in in the strap, that was the turning point. But I, I it could have been just endurance. No, no, I, I, I think the first strap match might have first still won. Okay. Yeah, because I think they might have right. been in the straps a couple of times. But in the same time, Mazahir did not uh Coach Ray didn't have a good strap setup. He had he had the buckle and he, you know, it just was not too ideal for him really for the strap to benefit him in that match. But also Mazahir did a mistake. That was another thing. Mm-hmm. From from the moment where Coach Ray got the strap and he liked it. Mazahir kept trying to go outside and that took away from him because Coach Ray is committing, trying to get him on the inside. Mazahir kept trying, going to where it's like, at this point, it's too hard for him. So by the time he maybe wants to defend himself inside, he was already not in his position and he's already given up a lot because he went wrong in the first place. I think if he could have just went inside when his outside didn't work, I think he will have done a lot better or could probably potentially he could have won probably or get it to where it was four zero for him. But because never, I think I've never seen somebody that 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 had a lot of I mean, well, I guess maybe they exist, but somebody that was doing so the the you're saying they were a bit even, but Mazar was clearly stronger, I think, in the beginning, right? And then it just he just totally burnt up because there were like twelve matches at the end. I don't know how many how many rounds yeah. they kept going and going. And Ray said this funny joke about they paid a lot, so they need a lot of them uh, to see the whole thing. But there was no, like oh. well, well, see, I just uh, speak from the experience from the experience because every time I'm pulling with somebody that's like very close to me and even though I could be a little stronger than winning like I want to have like so much in there because we're so close and if uh-huh. both of us can stay that close it's a little hard if, if I'm a lot stronger than my opponent I can look a lot better for a longer longer time until if I if I get tired at all depends how but if somebody that close I think like Kaplan, I've I've been to the positions like I have a few local guys that I can beat very confidently on the very, very first pool mm-hmm. in like practice setup. And then I'll lose every single, single one of the next one. I will not come back. 
I will not come back. But the first one, when I'm the freshest, like it probably has a lot to do with the chemistry in the body and the creatine and all of that thing. So sort of that nature. You have a lot of power naturally. You're like explosive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? As I was, as I was, say, as I was saying in our first podcast, like, uh, you know, my mom wasn't trying to have me stay at home the whole time. So I was in sports all my life. So, like, even though, you know, I mean, I don't look like it, but I've done so much. I've been an active kid. So I'm pretty much, like, you know, I mean, that's why when I got to arm wrestling, I have, you know, a little athlete, uh, you know, background here and there. Yeah, I know, but that's a, that's a genetic thing. I mean, there are a lot of polymorphisms, a lot, not just one. It's not just about your type 2 to type 1 muscle mm-hmm. fiber ratio. There's a lot mm-hmm. of things involved in the, for example, mm-hmm. the angiotensin system, the mm-hmm. cardiovascular system, all plays a role. Some of them have play a role in, in power and are associated with elite uh, power athletes. But moving on mm-hmm. from, I really enjoyed watching that match, to be honest, because I, I'm a fan of Ray's channel a lot. So when it first mm-hmm. started, I was really upset. I was like, oh, I, this can't happen. Mm-hmm. To three, I didn't want it to go 6-0 or something like that. But it just turned around. It was great. And it shows his, I think, his also, I mean, you're saying maybe he's a little one-dimensional in the style, but he, he is like an intelligent puller also, I think. Uh, see, that's why I kind of questioned it. See, oh, I, I thought I thought she could have done a lot more, a lot more active stuff early, but uh, I think he was just committing to this one thing, the to where he was lucky enough to where it worked. But I think I think she could have done different stuff on those first early matches. Was a little bit. Obviously, the first one was the first one. You you, you know you lose you lose. You lose. The second but and second. Three. Second and third, uh, and all, the only thing I see him was offering, he was, over, he was always starting early. He was always, you know, because he goes for the inside, he always curves in early. And, like, like he was kind of lucky to get away with it. Because, I mean, it's, I don't know what's, uh, you know, was the delay between the Audi video gig and the stream, but mm-hmm. from where Bill was saying go and to where you can see Coach Ray kind of carving in first every time. Like almost every time. Did you know that Ray is a strong bench presser? He he bench presses around four yeah. pounds. Yeah, he has a good powerlifting stats. Yeah, that's yeah. Why, that's why he is so strong. Yeah, but he looks natural to me. So that's really impressive. If you can be bench pressing four hundred pounds naturally, it's really impressive. So I'm wondering why he doesn't have a press. Or you know, no, he like, does. Like he does. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's just like it, the press not going to work as well when somebody is so much stronger than you, right? You look at his highlights, look at his local guys that he kills over there. Mm. He kills them with an explosive press. It's not a top roll, really. It's always explosive press. Fascinating. I didn't it's just, that, you know, when, when somebody is, uh, when somebody you're facing it like as strong as you or stronger, you know, I mean, you, you might not be able to get to those cool spots that you can look against versus another guy. Okay, so schoolboy comes out two hundred seventy five pounds. I was mm-hmm. like, damn, you Russians get big. I mean, there's something like something about in Russia you have some special water or something. This guy is twenty one. He looks like a child, but he's six five, two seventy five. Mm-hmm. He's bigger mm-hmm. than he's ever been, right? He looked huge to me. Yeah, he looks. He looked like a man. And, and he had that he, arm. He, 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 yeah, right. he escalated. He escalated to a school director. Yeah. <laughs> But he has that arm wrestling physique where he's big. The only uh-huh. muscle you see that's big on him, though, is his forearms. Just uh-huh. by themselves, it was really quite frightening. I was worried for Larry. What did you think of... I mean, did did you think that Larry shouldn't have set himself up with such a such a professional arm wrestler? People said that. I was just talking to a couple of people that were messaging me, like, what did Larry expect to stop me? So, like, Russian people. And I'm like, uh, I mean... I don't think we should look at it from this point of view. I think like Larry, you know, I mean, like he, he was already pulled school way before, like it's a heavy little history. And I don't think the match matters as much as, I don't know, the did make probably lots of money, a lot of use. I think it's promotion first and match second. I think Larry, I mean, Larry must have realized that, you know, he might have a chance, but in the same time, his chances are not that big. Even though lots of people were rooting for him. So I don't really know. I think, I think we're kind of confusing ourselves because probably there were so many people rooting for him. He probably did believe in himself, but even if he did not, and if in if he knew the outcome, I think he I don't I think he probably fine with it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not like he he is losing to a better arm wrestler. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I did like Larry's pulling. I did like what how did he look? Um, he looked like he was not pulling as a professional arm wrestler, but he was pulling 
really, really safe. Like in some positions where like, you know, people like yeah. Devin will have turned the shoulder or something. He kind of stayed on his biceps, making sure he is not injured himself. And that was pretty cool to see. And even on some spots, like uh, him slipping in the second round, I think it was, and th- certain moves, he did really good. Like he looked like good, like he was thinking about it, like he was doing stuff. And overall, uh, like he said, he wasn't shaky. He was, his setup was really wrong, I think, for his, for the way he looked. I think his setup was wrong for what he was trying to do. Did you see the Honestly. first round setup, which was he loaded a lot to the degree he was shaking? There was a lot of loading in the yeah, first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like his overall setup mm-hmm. was kind of a little, a little funky. And but overall, besides the first one, he looked pretty. Um, I don't know what to say. Like collected, he looked mm-hmm. pretty collected. That's a good word. Like he was everything. He was not trying to be, you know, super like static, weird. You know, not no. He kind of he knew where to go, mm-hmm. and he tried, and he just met stronger opponent. It, but I think that. He set up a little bit. Was better. his biggest weakness was his pronation and his and his cupping? Because I saw Schoolboy got his got his got. I mean, he got really a great cup in there. And then he yeah. and then I felt like Larry fell on his bicep, which was strong, but he was using it. I it looked like he's using his bicep like to curl or something, like it wasn't yeah. a static hold. It was more of like a you know powerlifter strength hold. Well, as I'm saying, like I think he was trying to play it safe. You know, so he wasn't really talking what too he, much. But what he, what he needed those Ryan's uh, that that uh, nice lift that they're doing on arm PR. <laughs> he needed that one, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry uh, to interrupt you. I was joking. No, no, no. I, I get it. I get it. But in a, I think he was just he just met a way stronger opponent. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, it's for. I thought it would have been close. I said in my predictions that I if Larry wins it, I'm not going to be too too surprised. Whatever, but. Schoolboy leveled up so much, I Can think. And not only leveled up, he gets he get beat him last time because I watched the super matches when the Larry beat him after he pulled Cali, but then they repulled and Schoolboy beat him. So it was just a matter of who actually like was fresher like today. What do you think of uh, for the audience that that are not and myself to be honest, I don't know. What does Schoolboy like in in the international? Because now he's a super heavyweight. Can he compete mm-hmm. in Zloty? Is he of that level? I don't know. See, the situation with Schoolboy is funny because a lot of Russians don't like him because he's got way more popular than all of those guys are. So he gets a lot of hate. Mm. That's one thing. He gets a lot of hate. Second thing, he gets a lot of views. So, and a lot of like hype from regular dudes. So people like me and you, who's like kind of just curious. So, and we're confused by people that hate him, we're confused because we kind of think he is somewhere there, and there's, like, only so many people really know where he's at, so it's kind of hard to, to judge. Like, I think um, he just took, what, like, third or second place at Russian Nationals Juniors. Not Nationals Nationals, but the Juniors. I don't think he went to real Nationals. I, I don't know. I think he only went to Juniors one. But he's still big, you know. In Russia, they still get like a thousand entries. It's a oh, huge wow. tournament. It's just the kids. It's everybody in between you want. It's a thousand of them. Wow! Oh like, wow! It's a big, That's incredible. That's a very. Yeah, deep. It's, it's it's a big tournament, right? Like even the the real nationals don't get that. People are saying, oh, maybe they do. Maybe they do because juniors can also compete there. Um, Who's his brother? They said his Alexis? brother's an arm wrestler. Also, is that Alex Toprol? Yeah. Alex Topro is his brother? Yeah. I didn't realize the, that. I saw him with him, but I was like, are they, they look similar a little bit. I was he, like, <laughs> he's the one he's the one that's filming the videos that you oh, watch. I didn't realize. I was like, why is he okay? He's always in his videos, obviously. I didn't realize at all till I heard Neil yeah. Pickup mention it. Well, he's that's, the one that created kind of. Okay, that's very cool. That's very yeah. cool, actually. That that's very cool. Okay, so let's move on to the insane match. So, by the way, apparently, guys, to the audience also, I am way worse at predicting arm wrestling matches than I am at body bodybuilding matches. At the last Olympia, I got the top five right in a row, I think. This time uh-huh. I got nothing right. So I, I thought Schoolboy will win. And I wasn't sure about Ray, but I thought there was no way Devin was gonna win. So and I, I really need you to explain to me what happened. I don't understand. So one thing I just want to mention my thoughts. So just for the audience to know, it was the most shocking match I think I've I've personally seen. I never expected something like that in the way, in the form that Devin did it. A couple of notes though. Um, 
Well, what do you, how do you, how do you think it happened? How did, I mean, a couple of things. So Devin is 200 and he's 20 pounds heavier than him. He's been, the, the background story of this is that the last six months, Devin has been claiming to be eating pancakes all day. And so he's been taking videos of himself, eating pancakes. And he's been talking about his training style, which he said was different than ever before. He said he's been working unilaterally on only his right arm. Right. Mm -hmm. And leaving it not just not just his left hand in arm wrestling, but in all, all exercise away. And he says he trains throughout the day at a table and he moves these little little movements, uh, very mm -hmm. short movements, static movements. And he holds the position. I was imagining a Devin sort of like the one we saw that faced Seplenkov. But, you know, that he was much smaller and he didn't have real power. And usually he has like a, he's a genius at the table. This time, Devin came and he was like, let's. Get ready. We're going to face each other. The voice was like, I was like, what? That's Anadrol voice. Where did you get that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was interesting really voice. Good. So, no, I heard the voice. So I was like, oh my God, that's not just fat. Because because it's he gained, he gained something else. But I didn't expect that. I mean, Ma Michael didn't move him. And and the shocking thing, the background of this is also is that Michael has been trying to get a match with Levon, who's undoubtedly probably the number one person, and trying to challenge that. And, he, and this thing happened now where... It, everything changes. So what's your analysis of what? How, how did he get that strong? Or is he that strong? Did Michael slip because he's been doing a lot of video filming around the world? Nah. Well, I think it's going to be a good reason. There will be a couple of good theories about before. Actually, I want to let other, I, I want to talk about what you're talking about. But I think since we're going to talk about what other people be talking about, I want to give a little breakdown of Larry Wheels and Coach Ray situation too. Oh yeah, because th they're gonna get a lot of hit right now. Like the people being in comments, like, "Well, this now that shows the coach Ray is a shitty coach and all that." And like, well, the people are gonna be like that. And I, I just wanna give like people a heads up that it's not really how it works. Like it's more complicated than that. You know what I'm saying? Like just because somebody's, you know, but because you lost the match doesn't mean you really you coach is that bad. It's just thing happens if you pull from your opponent, right? You can have the best. I can have the best coach in the world. That we can, that we can imagine that you can come up with, right? Because it's not really a title. You know, we'll have our favorites and stuff. You know, somebody wants to get trained by Ryan Bowen and think it's going to be legit. Somebody wants to get trained by Coach Trey. Somebody wants to get trained by you know somebody in Dubai. Like who knows? Why so, are you training people? By the way, let's also comment on that because I've been trying to encourage you. I think you should be a coach also. There's a lot of coaches online. And you have a great, we, great way of we, speaking. We, we, we can we can talk about it, but with that being said, if I'll have one of the best coaches for where we can come up with, and I'll go and uh, challenge them and Larry in three months, like nothing gonna really happen. You know what I'm saying? Like so, it's like people should not go ahead and trash both of these guys, like Larry and Coach Ray. Just just a quick comment because that's 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 common. That's common. Well, not, well, to be honest, it's uh, unfortunately the arm wrestling community. Many people don't know is like extremely divisive, and people like to argue, especially on Facebook. It's like the uh, Facebook yeah, is like yeah, the hell right. of arm wrestling hell. It's like you died and went to arm wrestling hell. Everybody's arguing with each other. So people like then try to attack people that come into the sport, like Scott Mendelson, my friend, when he first came in, and also uh, oh, yeah. from another sport, they try to attack them. And Larry is such a nice guy. I just don't get how anybody can do that. The guy like. You know, when you yeah. hear him speak, he's so respectful. He's just doing so much for the sport. And, you know, he doesn't get much out of it. Like, arm wrestling doesn't get many views. I mean, Larry could be getting more views doing Strongman. And, you know, he's doing this out of love of his heart. So I think everybody should be... I just hope he didn't get turned off from losing the match like that, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So so let's let's come back now to the original topic, to Michael Conn and Devin Larry. So... Let's go ahead. Uh, it might, I don't know. I think we talked about last time, but I, I did a prediction bigger shortly after I, I was going with Michael Todd originally. Like every if on Michael Todd's channel, I told them that I'm Michael Todd is going to win this, and da, 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 and but once the rules were announced, that's why I changed my mind. Ah, that's what Michael, I forgot to mention. Yeah, once the rules were announced, I was like, you know what. I don't think Michael is winning this actually. So whenever I did my final predictions for every match, like when I did the mm. individual video and my my Instagram post is demo Laird. Mm. Uh, but I get the score. But I mean, I get scores. I was thinking about four two, you know, whatever. But I picked demo Laird. I picked Coach Ray, and I picked 
schoolboy, right? I was three foot three. Oh, <laughs> great job. Yeah. yeah. And there's stakes, but I stakes so much, so little money. I made like eight bucks or whatever, but <laughs> I was good. But regardless, like I, I, you know, I was not sure if I can win money on debit. I was not sure, but I was kind of thinking with this rules, there's so many things that benefit Devin at this point. Uh, like I think it has like the feel of vanish at least. So I think he can pull this off and, and it worked. Now I can be cocky. Like, like I knew that Devin okay, got stronger, but, but explain, I kind of just kind of bad. Explain to the audience that don't understand what was the major issue with the rule change with, is it named Bill Collins is, uh, or Bill? What's no, the, yeah, Bill Collins, Bill Collins, but they both, they all, they, they agreed to it. They all negotiated, yeah. They all kind of got the rules and broke them down. And I think all of them were disadvantageful to Michael, right? Uh, uh, the pads, the normal size pad, I I think Michael Michael needs that extra inch, I think, because he likes to be on the pad a lot. The WA uh, pad that's very thick, so Michael can... Yeah, yeah. Th- I think, and it's long. It's longer, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's like, it's not 7 by 7. It's like 9 by 7 or something, right? Yeah. It's 2 inches longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the pad and six rounds. Uh, I think in my history, every time Michael Todd pulled a vendetta, he lost. Like he wins super matches best out of five. Mm-hmm. Every six rounder, I think he lost. Like I think he lost to Truven, he mm-hmm. lost to Dennis, he lost to Pushkar. I I don't think I don't know if he beat anybody. He might have beat somebody, but I don't think significant enough for me to remember, I guess. Uh, like, he does, like he pins people. He gets wins in those. But I think in overall, uh, because he is a defensive arm wrestler, in my opinion, the Kings Wolf is pretty much defensive thing. So if somebody gets an opportunity to hit Michael six times instead of three, it's just an opportunity to hit to hit for the defense. And, like, and it's harder to catch, I think six times in a row but i mean we didn't even get anywhere near there i mean it's almost yeah. like i wonder if the pads were really that significant because well could... like not that i i think uh i think i was just saying about yeah, that yeah. i was just kind of uh, playing it safe right that those two things benefit if something goes down but in reality Devon just legitimately got so much stronger you know what i'm unbelievable. saying like unbelievable he couldn't he it just he legitimately barely... leveled up yeah, yeah, he, he leveled up for sure. I mean, his arm barely moved. It was almost like what Siplenkov did to Devon three three years yeah. ago. Very similar to yeah, that. And no, nobody ever did Michael like that. No, nobody ever did Michael like that. Like you know, if you think about it, like nobody did, was Truman. like like Pushkar did okay, but Pushkar was getting caught. Pushkar was getting caught outside of his shoulder a little bit. But Pushkar still significant. Like push, when Pushkar was coming back and he and he did it really good. I think Pushkar was really cl- like kind of. I don't know. We have to rewatch it if somebody can find the match. But I think it was really uh, kind of fast in certain degrees. But Devon, Devon did it from another perspective. But also, you know what? Devon is also has the best style because the way he can fight the king's move, he got it down. Because I've noticed by watching people that pull Michael, who can can smash. If you don't know how to like properly go by the king's move with the height and the press, you're gonna look like you're a lot weaker. But if you can know like the proper things, you're gonna look better. Even though you're not gonna win it, you're gonna look better. So I think a lot of that, like if you attack it properly, you'll go harder at it. And that's why I think Devon has the best spot because he really knows where to go. Like he's the guy, it's like he's the perfect counter. Yeah. He just never had the power really. Well, I mean, he had he had a couple of times, right? I mean, they they, go, they went back and forth, but right now he got super strong. Whereas, like every counter he does, it works so much better because he's so much stronger. Yeah, just to put per, for per perspective for the people, like when Devin came to our arm arm wrestling gym here, he had to practice with us with Scott and Vosgen and uh, Herman and these kind of guys. They can't move him. I mean, this was before when, when I mean, he would just like be defensive, play around. And and this was when he was comparatively weak. This is when he when he faced uh, Dennis and th- those days. So and this well, was he was uh, that's very, compared to, to, very compared to Dennis. That's, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. So he's actually extremely strong, you know, because there's a lot of people online saying, oh, he has a big YouTube channel. He's not that. Son. And then maybe the listeners think, oh, no, maybe he wasn't that strong. So he's very strong. But we're talking about a different level in uh-huh. which. 
what I saw, okay, this is what I want to know, Artem. So what I saw was that, okay, Devin tried to obviously game the system all the time and he was, you know, talking and showing his oh shirt and doing those kind of things. Yeah, obviously. Oh but God. but this time I, I thought he was gaming the system. He wasn't confident. I think he felt something when he when he when they slipped, I think, originally, or something happened. But anyway, his hand would be just he kept he was not moved. And then, like you're saying, going from the top and going down, it wasn't just that. Monster Michael Todd couldn't move him. And then I felt like when when Dennis would turn to the side, Todd couldn't get in his position, the one that he wants to get in. The, I don't know what that mm-hmm. is. Maybe involving the, the pads or the height. I don't know if it's the head height and the how much he had to open up. But he, I felt like he couldn't get in his defensive position. Yeah, and, he probably couldn't have dropped his shoulder low enough. Is that, you think, part, part partially dropping the shoulder? He needed to get that... Yeah, because I think like the shittier rules and like if you can get wild, because you know Michael can only open up so much, right? It's yeah. like it's really low amount. But yeah. if you can drop the shoulder on top, of it, he can at least like hell like hold on until he simply can't. You know, what I'm saying like where just just his body. But he was kind of either not trying to keep the match kind of looking cleaner, or I don't know if he just couldn't really do it. So basically, Devin not only shocked the world, but he mm-hmm. also changed the whole discussion now because that whole idea of, of uh, the West, are the American pullers as good and, and why are they not in you know the top eight? If they get in the top eight, maybe mm-hmm. they can succeed. Well, that's out the window a little bit because... Well, well, Devin played his cards right. Like Devin wanted to, this thing to happen for like, you know, a year now, right? Because he, when Michael Todd and the Vander in Dubai... Uh, Devin was trolling them to tell them to pull and all that stuff. Da, 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 da. They ended up never pulling. So Devin self-proclaimed uh, Michael Todd the number one puller in the world, right? He's so very strategic. He knew, <laughs> yeah, he put, so he said Michael is number one puller in the world, and I'm going to go and beat him. So now, now he beat him, and now he is doubly self-proclaimed number one in the world, which he might maybe is, but I, I'm not gonna really open the argument and like if it's like, you know, we don't yeah. we but but reality we, we have no idea because we've never seen him this strong. I'm mean, to, to tell the truth, right? There's no yeah. I mean I, you know what I mean? So I mean I don't imagine that anybody can go through Lalatin or Levon, but uh it's it's just crazy. I was so I mean well, I was so happy today. I tell you so, Artem, I was watching the thing. I had my appointment and I was trying to, I was hoping it will finish before my appointment. I have to leave the house and it did, thank God. I was watching it just stunned. I had no idea that he could be that strong. I mean, something something interesting is going on in terms of biohacking. I think there's a lot of biohacking going on at Devin's house, to be honest with you. That voice from the Terminator, I don't know. <laughs> that was amazing. He needs to have a new nickname. There's, there's, he's an Optimus something also. <laughs> I'm talking about when when Truben got his nickname when he when he transformed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think De- Devin just did his transformation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was a crazy match. So, Artem, I was hoping the next time because there's another match. I'm actually more excited about the East versus West that's being hosted by uh, Engen. Uh huh. I'm really excited for RVJ versus uh, Sasho, especially. Who else mm-hmm. is Who else is uh, going to East versus West? Do you know? Remember? I don't know because I think like and, well, you know, Engen is really angry about promotion and stuff and like i don't know here you like jumping at people so there's not much promotion going on sadly because it's such a it's the most incredible part it's like it's so much better than the so today overall that's not being promoted so it's kind of like i don't really know the matches like you telling me rvj i'm like i didn't know rvj was in the court oh yeah so, rvj like, and sasha I know Herman is going to pull somebody that I don't really know i think that one was canceled but i'm not sure there's tony Kitowski versus someone and I know RVG. The, the one that the, I'm only excited about one. I'm only excited about Todd Hutchings versus Zola. Oh, yeah. My God, that's really exciting. I, I, th- I think me and Todd Hutchings are going to go live this Sunday to talk about that. Oh, Cal will be watching. I can't wait. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a, uh, you know, I mean, the Todd Hutchings has been interviewed so many times. So I'm going to prepare myself just, we're going to. I'll, if we're gonna get this thing done, which I'm assuming he does, Todd is really simple to work with. Uh, it will be everything match related. I'll we'll try to talk about his training, how he feels about it, you know, how much Miller High Life will be spilled. So, <laughs> that is what he, <laughs> why does he like that brand so much? You know how many times I almost bought that beer just because of Todd Hutchings? I don't know if he's sponsored by them, but he should be because I almost no, bought no, no, them. he is <laughs> no, 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 he no, I, I it's me and you have the wrong logic. I told him that they should sponsor you. He's like, yeah, he said the opposite, I should sponsor them because they make <laughs> me stronger. 
<laughs> it makes me stronger. So it's like that's not how it works. Like I, I pay. I he's sponsoring him. He pays for that. So it's like works out for in his head. So it's a perfect logic. Uh, I mean, this right here, we bought a lot for the time when I flew him over here for the seminar. And I still, those are still the same cans that in the seminar was like in November. <laughs> <laughs> but every time he's Ooh. fought in a Zo- uh, or every time he's faced a Zolo before, he, it's twice, right? I think in a super match or, or was it a tournament? I don't know. Well, they had, I think they had two vendettas and they yeah. both won one, but I don't know if it was the same hand. I okay. think it was uh, Hutchings won one and Zolo won the other one. But I don't know the timeline, but I think I think Zoloev, I think Hutching still beat Zoloev at one of the A1 tournaments. I know the most recent A1 that Hutching beat Spartak. And Spartak Zoloev was like fairly close to uh, Hajimurat, I think. So I don't know. Like I know like it's not gonna be hmm. I don't know. There's many angles you can look at this. But I think it should be a good match. Yeah, like course. it should be. Well, I don't know if it'd be a good match, but it'd be an exciting match for sure. Well, you know, I mean, some people will say that, like, you know, Zolo, if it, will, it will be a cakewalk for him. Or my, some people might say, Tanhash. I'm more of thinking it should be a good match to where it's going to be close. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I like both of the guys too. So I can't even, like, I can root for, like, you know, I can say, like, I'm probably going to go for Todd Hutchins because, you know, I've met that Hutchins. But, I also like Zolo, but I never met Zolo. So, like, I'll have to go with Sam Hutching based on pure favorite. Wait, just and, let's uh, let's put a perspective for the audience on this one because it's an interesting match in, w- in what regard, especially. Like, when we're talking about Devin facing the top super heavyweights in Europe, it's not as the, the heavyweights, super heavyweights in Europe are not as stacked of a class. The middleweights, especially Zolo's class, is probably the most competitive class, and Zoloev is potentially the best in that class, or one of the best, one of the top. So when Todd comes over as potentially the best heavier middleweight in the U.S., the interesting thing is, can he hold his own with him? Because if it, if he can, it says something about how the Americans versus the Europeans could be in that class, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the thing is to uh, the weight. I guess was making the math because uh, there's the weight cut off, and I think it kind of benefits Zoloy for a little bit. It makes the weight have to go down, right? Yeah, I don't think Todd is that heavy anyway. I think Todd can sit around 225 too, but still will cut because the weight is 213 pounds. Is mm-hmm. the weight cut? So, and I think Zoloy is not that heavy anyway. You know what I'm saying? I think like Zoloy can bulk up a lot. I've been looking at Zolo. I'm following Zolo on Instagram. I just started following him, and uh, I've been looking at his pictures. He doesn't look like that. All that weight is muscle. It seems like he's gaining a little bit of fat. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know big, how he's big, big t-shirts. No, no. He's ta- he has some shirts with uh, some uh, pictures with his shirt off, and he um, has a little bit of fat. I don't know if it's it's all useful. If, obviously, with an arm wrestler, just having weight can be useful. If he has a uh, and he has an incredibly strong arm and hook, you know, incredible. But I think he's also like relaxed a lot of times too. You know, what I'm saying I think he oh. he trains when he he trains probably a lot, but he trains a lot more when he trains for something too. So he can get out of shape in the off season thing, but. Should not be now because is it pulling in what like two and a half weeks, two weeks almost? Like yeah. it's soon, right? Yeah. Uh, did like, you see the Did you see the interview with the Arson when Arson Arson and Zolo were together drinking uh, tea uh, with Todd Hutchins? It was. I so think cool. so. They strike me. I guess you guys in in Russia a little bit like Arabs. You guys drink tea and like hang out at uh, at tea shops and stuff like oh, that. Right? T- well, I, I mean, where I'm from, there was no tea shops, but I assume <laughs> that's the deal. Yeah, I mean, I, I like my teas. Yeah, I'm you know, a big tea guy. I oh yeah, I mean, a lot of Kazakhstan is big in tea because you know I think the logic is because it's always super hot. It was 150 million degrees hot. So suppose if you like you're you drink tea, it makes you actually pull down a little bit. That there's a logic, or you know, pull you to sweat from the inside, pull you down, something like that. So, yeah, the tea is a big part. I mean, I drink my, I drink a lot of tea. I drink tea probably tea cup every day. And sometimes when I feel like I want to have like midday cool dessert, you know, after lunch, I have me like a big dessert thing. I'll make me a cool tea. Like I'll actually go like and pick and pick a rooibos tea that I mix with. Uh, uh, real cocoa husks. I have a, uh, my one of my arm wrestlers' buddy's wife. She makes chocolate, and mm-hmm. she makes it from scratch. She buys, uh, you know, cocoa beans from places, and she roasts them and breaks them herself. And they ended up having the cocoa husks. Mm-hmm. And 
people either throw them out or use them for tea. So I mix that with my tea. And I have like this because by its own, it's I don't I you know like it that much too bitter, but I mix the cocoa and tea, and I have a little chocolate flavor tea to you should, myself. You should be a little careful about that because it's odd. Uh, cocoa, uh, even supplements, but especially um, the raw materials, are often severely contaminated with cadmium. Cadmium is a heavy metal that is toxic to you. There's only like three, for example, coca supplements that have acceptable levels to, in my opinion, of cadmium. Yeah, it's interesting. So many people don't know when they're in, especially that dark chocolate, especially the organic version, organic especially has a lot of cadmium. People people tend to think it's healthy, but you're taking a lot of heavy metal, maybe worse than. Uh, but but anyway, that's off off topic. But so that's really exciting. So you know, it's, like, it's, it's like the only thing I enjoy in life. It's chocolate, right? And now you, well, I don't. I don't, no, I there, don't do organic. There I don't are good do brands. Organic. I can, I can I recommend some do brands. Organic. Girard okay. Deli, Girard Deli has has of the of the chocolate pieces and of the uh-huh. coca powder. Girard Deli is one of the best ones. You can find it easily in stores around there. But you know, yeah, but it's, it's not the good chocolate, really, because I'm you know I'm going for the Russian chocolate. You know, I'd say, <laughs> like, I have I have a good good plug. But so, Jerry, Jerry is not that bad, though. It's pretty good, but it's, you know, still not Russian. You know what I would like? You know, I, I'm hoping to get RVJ on the channel soon. What I wish is RVJ would do an Optimus Prime like Devin just did. This would be my dream because this guy, you know, he came from the sport that I used to be in when I was like in 2005 at Grip Sport. He used to be uh-huh. one of the kings of Grip, grip Sport, you know. Uh, recently, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Jed, uh, one of the Grip guys on on YouTube, made a video uh, confirming what RVJ claims, which is he's closed the COC4, which I don't know if you mm-hmm. ever tried the four. You know what I'm talking about? That thing, like you jump well, on I, it. I told you, I'll tell you, my, my third one's still packaged. <laughs> <laughs> the four, you could, you stand on it. It looks like it's not going to close. Only four people closed it uh, officially or five people. And he's done that. He has incredible natural strength, you know. He looks like he's on steroids, actually. It, it, just, just with the upper mm-hmm. body and his arms are 20 inches. I can only imagine what would happen to this guy if he if he got on hormones. Uh, I, w- I wish that would happen, you know. He's competing at such a disadvantage. You know, once you become an expert arm wrestler, which I'm not at all, but maybe you're at that level where you become an expert, where your tendons and everything else is so powerful that uh-huh. that force that, that you can get from, from hormones over six months, maybe 20% increase in general strength, you can actually use on the table when you're when you're an mm-hmm. amateur arm wrestler like i was you take steroids they don't really help you much you can't, you, can't yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah I, i'm very excited about that so we should we should do a, a a recap also of that one after if you have time it'll be very exciting yeah the whole thing oh yeah for sure for sure all right brother well i'll let i'll let you be for today and uh, oh, oh. we'll catch up in a couple of weeks yeah sure i would i've talked about everything we talk, i recovered everything michael thought that yeah we did it so, really. I mean, it's just so shocking. I kind of get over it, to be honest. I got you a good title. I got you a good title for the world clip. What? Who should be? Who should be the next match for Devin Larry? Well, that's a good point. I was gonna say Devin shocks the world, but that's a good question. Who is? The, I mean, I wonder if they would allow, like, for example, not Levon because he has the title, but Lalatin. Because if Lalatin faces Devin, well, let, let's think. Well, actually, what I want to talk about too. Now that the kind of uh, people are getting out those double contracts and stuff, lots of PL guys will be scared to lose Igor because they have nowhere to go. Right? All those little leagues, all this kind of American based Russian guys are scared to uh, to tell Igor what the real thing about Igor because they have nowhere to go. They don't have the following. You know, I mean, they kind of done over there. Mm. But so let's say we don't have the boundaries, right? Let's say everybody is brave enough to leave and pull, and Devon can pull anybody. Let's say there's no, let's say, you know, Larry's league takes off and it's stable. Who is Devon pulling? The question is does Devon pull somebody other than Lalatan and Levan? And if so, who is that? Right? Like, uh, I mean, he should pull Zeplinkov, but the Zeplinkov shape is like, you need to see his help. Herbs. Yeah, I mean, he has. Uh, I mean, let, let, let's say that uh, it's not clear that anybody has ever been stronger than Siplenkov in arm wrestling. It's not clear. Uh-huh. Right? You can't uh-huh. know, but he's not unfortunately who he is. But what I what I'd like to see is like Evgeny Prudnik or somebody like that first, and see if he can Ooh. get through those guys. No, I think it's too far. I'm talking about monster Prudnik. Prudnik, not not regular Prudnik. I think Prudnik's too far still. You think he's too powerful? Too far, too far for 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 Devin. It will not be a match. Oh, you think that that Prudnik can't keep up with Devin? No. Nah, you think he's that strong? All. 
Yeah, not at all. No, no. Wow, really? But didn't Putin get get fourth at the top eight last time? Or, but or, is not team like him and Ro- Ros- Rostam like war has a war and shit like this? Like yeah, but Ru- Rustam, Rustam couldn't no Rustam couldn't keep up in the top eight last time at all. Yeah, but still had a match. You know, he's not the top guy at the thing, and you know, and Rustam and who has a match? So wait, who? <laughs> what is what is Engen's ranking saying right now? Before this match, what was it? Levan. Right, right arm in the top. Do you well, it's probably, it's probably something super delusional. Let's yeah, he's about it. to change it in, in right now. Today, the rankings are changing around the world. Where is his rankings at? Is there a website that's going to be a It's so hard to find, bro. Like, uh, <laughs> Vosgen sent it to me before. It's like world arm wrestling rankings or something. It doesn't say Engen there, but it says like it's a survey. Engen ranking uh, arm wrestling. I don't know why my eyes are getting dry. This finasteride stuff, man. No joke. World arm wrestling rankings. Uh, I know he's got Levon. Oh, wow, that's 2013. <laughs> I think he had Levon first, um, Lalatin second, and My- Michael Todd third. Which you would think that Devin just got himself in the top five of everyone's rankings on the right arm. Yeah, I mean, I kind of found something. Oh, we didn't even I mention mean, the crazy stuff that Devin said during the match. I'm going to break your arm. You want me to break your arm? Uh, too weak. I mean, it was crazy, this stuff. Uh, really aggressive and confident. It was really impressive. I mean, there are very few match. Very few people can talk that well in a match while doing great. Oh, yeah. And, like, he was, pushing it. It. he was pushing it, too. Like, he was making, you know, I mean, like, it was, it was a hard one. It was a hard I, one. I feel like, bad for Michael because, you know, he was... This this destroys his his you know the end of his leg you know whatever was going on in the last year where people thought that he could be the top. He's taken off the you know he's not. Well, well, also you know I mean like a, a lot of people have hard time watching Michael Todd like and he's you know he's just something with the personality and being a little insecure here and there thing. And like you can see, like the, the way he was acting during the super match, it was a little like funky, right? I don't, I don't think he was expecting the loss, and he wasn't sure what to do with himself. Yeah, but, like he was, he was not that collected with himself. I but, th- however, 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 we now got we now got the update for the rankings. It's oh, not yeah. updated yet, but as of right now, right hand first place Levante in Australia, second place Michael Todd. Third place Vitali, fourth place Demolier. Oh yeah, Devin is fourth. Interesting. Yeah, Jerry Carteret is fifth. Dave Chafee is sixth. Trubin is seventh, and your boy Prudnik is number eight. My boy is Trubin actually, but <laughs> my buddy is Trubin. I'm gonna say you were trying to tell me that Prudnik <laughs> is somebody. Yeah. He is, but I think from Devin is a little far. And left hand is Levon, Vitali, Krasimir. Demolaire. Actually, you know what? I, what match I'd love to see is Devin versus Trubin. Trubin is a you know such a flexible arm wrestler, and he's still very strong. It would be nice to see is Devin stronger than him, you know, because because if, if Devin's not stronger than him, it will be an amazing match because Trubin can go anywhere. Yeah, because they both they both it will be a good match. I agree with you because they both are. Ah, like a normal look at normal pulling armor. It's like, yeah, Devon has this King's Most thing going on, right? But he's not going to do it to Prudnik, I don't think. So they both are great arm wrestlers. It's except true. like Devon. De- yeah, ex- except that Devon can do this, you know, funky stuff on your table. But besides that, yeah, the, the match can go anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. Really and good. it can be good. Yeah, because and they're both tall. They're both like pretty big dudes. And um, yeah, that's it's, that's totally weird. I don't know if Trubin's in the next top eight either. He might not be registered for. I don't know if he is. Who knows? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is he moving from Kazakhstan to living in Russia? Uh, you know, who knows what's going on with, with that whole thing? Probably. So, so there's something financial going on. See, if there's financial, I don't think he is on that. Um, you know, I think you know from a popularity standpoint, I don't think Trubin will be in a conversation. But it's not a bad match, just even just to see. Even if a lot of people were confident that they were going to win it, I think it is a pretty fun match. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. Really good. yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind seeing that. Even though I'm probably going to bet for Devin, I, 
It's, I would like, I will be interested in this more than Michael thought. But you know what? I was always, I was like super hating, but you know, as I was telling everybody, this Michael Todd Devil Larry at Night Shangri-La is cool because it's, you know, what can they see different? And that was the only like case. Like, you know, if somebody comes super, super strong, I always forget about it that if they're a little bit upset, that will make it exciting. I mean, he's so intelligent. He's such an alpha male, intelligent, focused on winning. He's always been like that, but he never had that actual. <laughs> power just to blow people away at the top levels it was more like i think after like 2010 he was more of a defensive puller and endurance mm -hmm. puller and here he was defensive but he was a wall you couldn't move around him it was just ridiculous yeah. you know, they're both defensive i guess but like i think michael tried to move him originally and i think once they, they he felt that something you could see his his you know even his wife by the way they're wonderful people michael and his wife i've met them many yeah. times there's that's true sweethearts wonderful people but you could see even his wife wasn't shouting anymore and Devin's wife yeah. was there, make out with him in between rounds. She's always doing this kind of stuff, you know. But it, it was just crazy. I'm gonna go rewatch it now, to be honest. As I get, as I upload yeah. this online, I'm gonna go rewatch it. But I'll let it's you go so we can crazy. upload this quickly. But we'll continue in uh, in a couple of weeks, or maybe before then, we, if we find something to discuss, we'll have another episode. Also, we should keep the series running. Yeah, sure. As I said, we have a couple of subjects we talk about. Uh, you know, the all the interesting <clears throat> supplements and stuff about this. Whole Wait, we haven't thing. even we, talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, we have too many subjects. We, we can, if you one if great you subject, we could do an episode trying to guess what what Devin took for this match. I'd love to know. Hey, you, <laughs> you, you you invite some experts, so I'll I can stay somewhat relevant, and we can have a conversation about this. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. I'll just talk for to more about, just I'll for talk to you more about it offline. Also, yeah, for educational purposes only. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna text you about it. Actually, I, I think I have some some theories. But anyway, we'll stop for now, brother. It's such a pleasure to talk to you each time. Have All a right, great weekend. Good talking to you too. You have you have fun. If you have if you have an hour every day, you like to know we'll do the thing every day. All right, brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, especially because you're more free now. Yeah, we'll we'll try to do that, brother. All right. Yeah, it's for goods and not goods, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's, sometimes it's for good, brother. You get that freedom, and it put, gives you that pressure, and that pressure yeah. to find something else. And you can make what you love your life. You know, you don't yeah. have to have a job. You know, you can fig. I'm sure you can. You know, so let's try to figure that out together. Also, yeah, we'll All see. Right. We'll, we'll we'll figure something out. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Yeah, we'll